How are we going everyone? I'm out here in the orchard with my peach and nectarine trees. I showed you this a few days ago, maybe a week or two. Um, these are the trees that I never sprayed, unlike the one that I've got near the house, the larger one, that's been sprayed continuously through winter, or autumn and winter. This one here's been infected by leaf curl and aphids. Now, we did show you this earlier on. I've cleaned one earlier and I've sprayed that, but look at this. Look at my hands for starters. See the colour brow? Well, that's not the leaf. I'm squashing all the aphids uh, that are on the tree and ants. Here, can you see the black specks in there at the bottom? All these little squash ones, they're aphids. The larger things walking around are the ants. So we've got, you know, literally millions of aphids all over these leaves. Look at the leaves. I'll get them out into the light there. Have a look at that. See, they've got leaf curl blistering, which is a fungal problem. And we've also got the aphids, which also causes leaf curl. Um, but it does cause a lot of problems. Sorry, I've got... They're walking all over my hands now. Oh, there's a little... Can you see that? See it? See it? See it? It's gone. <laughs> well, it's all over my fingers. So that's squashing aphids. What I'm doing, get back on topic here, is removing all the infected leaves, all the stuffed leaves, all this stuff. It's, it's useless. It's pointless leaving it on the tree and ultimately the tree is going to drop it itself. So before it gets any worse, you know, I'm not going to wait for the tree to drop it because sometimes it'll drop it all and never recover. You'll actually have some dieback on the tree um, and it'll actually drop its fruit too. So it'll go all the way to the fruit. Now you can see this tree, if you have a close look, it's set all the fruit all over it. So you can see that there. Now there are also some flowers over here. These things here, I'm going to sacrifice those. I don't really, you know, I can't expect this tree to hold 50, 60 fruit on it at this age. It's only two years old. I mean, a year and a half growing it in the paddocks. And then when I planted it two years ago, that's it, three and a half years old. You know, if I get five fruit or 10 fruit off this tree, that's plenty for me. You know, I've got 200 trees here. 10 fruit on each tree, 200, that's 2,000 fruit. There's six of us here. Divide that, 350 days, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. Let's say six servings. I don't know what I'm talking about. Forget about it. There's a lot of fruit. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out how many fruit I'm going to eat. Somebody do the sums and get back to me. So what I've got to do in the meantime is remove all the leaves. That's what I'm doing here. So that's what it's going to look like. And aphids all over you. So look, put gloves on. If you don't like squashing them and you don't like handling your treat, put on some gloves so you can get into it properly. It's no point just pulling off one leaf. You can use secateurs if you like, or the little pocket pruners that we have, they're like scissors. They're great, you can prune them off. I pull them off carefully like that. I mean, I'm not yanking it, I am gentle with it. I've done it a million times. Well, it's sad to say that I've had leaf curl a million times, eh? So take your leaves off and then we're going to spray it. Now, I've prepared two solutions already. I've got a the Bluestone uh, fungicide base, that is our disease control pack, and I've also got our, well not ours, it's a homemade oil, soap and water. That's as simple as you can get it. I'm going to show you those in a second, but first I just want to remove all these leaves, and we're going to spray one on one tree and one on the other tree. And what I'm going to spray on this one is the, oh look at that, look, look at that, look. Just grabbing a leaf. That's just aphids, probably some ants, completely squashed all over. And more importantly, do not drop the leaves to the ground. You know, the aphids, I said last time, they don't crawl back up. Well, they actually have learned to crawl back up. A lot of people emailed me back saying they saw that. They, they washed them off the tree and they fell to the ground and they started to crawl back up again. So it's not only about the aphids, it's also the leaf curl, the spores from the fungus, uh, the leaf curl um, spores will live in the soil and will actually cause the tree to get leaf curl again the following season or even just continuously get leaf curl. Now what we're going to do is spray this tree first and foremost to control the aphids because that will be the quickest way to get rid of them and that's using our or making your own solution and that's a tablespoon of olive oil, a couple of drops of dishwashing liquid in a litre of water. Shake it well. Now. It, the, the liquid, the, the soap, sorry, is uh, to help infuse the oil with the water, but it's not stable. It won't be stable, so that means if you put the bottle down, walk away for a few minutes, come back, it will separate. But as soon as you give it a quick shake, it will form again. Now the oil will suffocate just as much as the soap will when it dries up on the plant um, or on the insect. Now this has still got heaps of insects. I can't see them because uh, they're so small, but I can assure you there are plenty there, even though I've taken off 90% of the leaves. So put the leaves in the bucket, 
put them in a plastic bag, a black plastic bag if you have, and tie it up and leave it in the sun to bake. All you're doing, it's called solarizing them. You're gonna cook the spores and the insects and leave it there for a week or two weeks. Put it aside somewhere where it gets plenty of sunlight. It'll heat up and nothing will survive. It'll get to 50, 60, 70 degrees in there when it's a hot day, even 20 degrees outside, it'll bake them. So then after a couple of weeks, you can toss them comfortably into your compost bin or burn them if you like, or just put them in your green waste bin, but don't throw them away or do not compost them fresh like this. All right, so. Here is the oil and soap. You can see it's a little bit murky, cloudy there, sorry. That's because the soap is blending through with a little bit of oil, but the bulk of the oil is at the top and then the soap suds on top of that. So we're just gonna give it a quick shake. Even if I did this with normal, just oil and water, it would not blend like that, okay? It still separates like anything does, like when you squeeze juice, you find the pulp and the, and the moisture, the water separates. The same thing will happen here. See, it's forming back up at the top. So the thing about spraying and making your own in, um, insecticides like this, you can add more soap if you like. You can reduce the amount of oil if you like. It's to be shaking it and agitating it continuously as you apply it. So for this tree here, because of the aphid issue that I have, I'm gonna spray it with the oil soap um, solution to control it. I wanna take off every single leaf here because I hate, look, I just touched that. Look what I grabbed. See that? I just said to you, there's no more. I mean, no more leaves on it. Very few, but look how many aphids just down here, rubbed on the branch. So there are plenty there. So we need to control the aphids. If you've got leaf curl and aphids on your tree, and the fruit set on it, you still got plenty of time to save all these little beauties on here, folks. So get your insecticide, homemade insecticide. Give it a good shake like this, and drench the tree. And that's what I'm going to do here. I need to get rid of every single aphid on this tree and then we're gonna spray it with the blue stone but not now if you need to spray both products always wait seven days between one and the other when you apply it so this is getting drenched and you can see constantly agitating it keeping the oil blending and getting a nice strong cover to the point of runoff there we are so that's been sprayed with the oil-based spray, homemade one, so we can control the aphids, get rid of them. And then in about seven days to 10 days, I'm gonna apply the bluestone fungus or the disease control pack that I have to control the leaf curl and all the new leaves that come out. And hopefully we'll monitor this and see how we go because I'm gonna do, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think about nine trees. It's the first row down there at the end there that are infected. You can see it from here, they've got a curl in them. So I'm gonna clean all those as well and spray them. Now, if they've got aphids, I haven't checked them yet. If they've got aphids, they're gonna get the insecticide, the homemade one, and this one over here, if they haven't got aphids, like this one over here, they're gonna get the fungicide spray, which is the disease control pack. And I've done this one already earlier on. So this is already dried up. So if you come from here, you can see the blue tinge on the foliage. Now I cleaned a lot of foliage off, not every single one of them. The fruit has set on it. You can see fruit all over. It's hard to see because it hasn't quite grown yet, but there is plenty of fruit on here. Some of the flowers will fall off, but more importantly, I've given it a good coat so I can protect it from any further leaf curl developing on it. I'm not sure how successful it will be because I did not spray this in winter or even in autumn at any stage. So I'm giving it a go now and seeing if I can suppress it. And it's all about suppressing and sustaining the health of the tree, the life of the tree, so it doesn't degenerate, it doesn't get any worse. Now, I'm gonna repeat this one more time, folks, because a lot of people will email me saying, why are you spraying your tree when there are flowers on it? I have got lots of fruits set and I have got a lot of flowers that haven't on here. I am sacrificing these flowers because I know by applying uh, a fungicide or insecticide on it, the chances of it setting fruits are gonna be highly unlikely those that are still uh, open as flowers. So I'm sacrificing this because I can, because I've got plenty of fruit and I'm not here to harvest and get mass production yet. The trees are still too small. I'm here to save the tree and bring it back to good health, nurture it back to good health. So this tree has been sprayed. If you want to spray your tree and you're worried about it and it's got flowers on it, sure, go and pick off the leaves first. You know, wait for the flowers to set. So anytime now, they'll start setting fruit if not already. Have a close look because you'll see that little ball falling. It'll look like a chickpea. Tiny little uh, fruit on it, the petals on the outside, the actual flower itself will fall away. Um, 
Yeah, there we are. There's a little example there. Now that hasn't grown large enough to form its full shape, but the actual fruit is there. The flower, the aspects of the flower haven't completely fallen away yet. So that will stay, that will form. We've got fruit here that have formed already better. You can see how the, the petals of the outside of the flower has fallen away and the fruit set. We've got more here. We've got doubles going on here. So we've got double buds going on here, which is fantastic. Now, I've given it a light spray with the bluestone. It's dried up beautifully. Let's monitor this. Not all these leaves, all these curled leaves already, they're going to fall off anyway. So as it brings on more leaves, keep pricking or picking off those infected leaves. Get them off the tree, bag them, burn them or solarize them but do not throw them on the ground you know a couple will fall here and there but the majority should be disposed of properly and you can get these products on our website well you can't get the oil actually you can get oil get your own soap that is and make your own insecticide from your home base and the blue stone or disease control pack as we have here that's available on our website dirt cheap and you, it gives you a lot of solution to make out of it and you can spray lots of trees for a couple of years to come at least last thing i want to show you before we go folks are my almond trees i had a quick look before they are delicious come and have a look have a look at these beauties eh? first year well it's the second year in the ground but look at the amount of almonds on here how they look at that, eh? How good is this? It's loaded. Now we've got one, two, three, four trees. Johnson Prolific and the self-pollinating one. So they've been able to pollinate each other and get all this wonderful fruit. And now this, I reckon 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I don't know, three, 400 almonds on this one here. The same over here. We've got plenty coming on now, folks. When I first planted these trees, I put a couple of shovels worth of black grit around the base of these and that has really helped the plants along really well. It's not only these trees, a lot of the other trees um, the flowering and setting fruit as well. Some of the apples and pears are late. They've gone straight into leaf. They've missed the whole flowering cycle. That's okay because I did prune them pretty hard, but the quince are loaded. A lot of the, I mean, you saw the peach and nectarines and now the almonds as well are starting to produce. First year, this one hasn't. This is the only one that hasn't done anything. But I'm okay with it. Actually, no, it has got a few in the middle here, but nowhere near like the other ones. You can see here, there. There's a few down here, but it's a little bit more leafy. Maybe I'll give it some, some more black grit. I reckon this one got too much black grit because it's all almonds. Have a look at it. It is literally loaded in almonds, which is fantastic, and that's what we want, folks. So if you haven't tried our black grit, give it a go. It's on our website, facilitiesgarden.com. We've got a huge special running on them. Uh, they're discounted to the lowest they've ever been ever since we ever brought them out into circulation and a lot of people who've tried it, um, you know, they love it. They swear by it. Uh, I get a great response from it. I haven't really had anybody complain. If you've got acidic soil, it really does reduce the acidity, builds the calcium and silicate and phosphates in your soil. Give it a go. Take advantage of a huge discount. The price is going up as of 1st of October. So if you haven't got some into your garden, take advantage of it now. Check it all out. Vasiliesgarden.com, the original website, the official website. That's me, Vasili. It's all there for you to enjoy. From me, Vasili, Maresi. There's a lot of Vasilis there, huh? Thank God there's only one here.